Let's learn how to resolve the 10,000 triangle mesh error in Fusion 360. My name is Adam James and like, comment, and subscribe for jumping right on in. Welcome back to my channel. Before we get started, I do want to mention that I apologize. I've got a 3D printer, so there might be some background noise. It's for another YouTube video for you all, so look for that soon. Uh, with that out of the way, uh, this video is going to go a little deeper into the video that I put out, which was uh, related to how to convert STL mesh to a solid body in Fusion 360. I was doing this kind of project with um, STL uh, meshes, and uh, <laughs> of course I was just using this kind of 3D scan that I found online of, of Mr. Beast. Um, it's super intricate, but I think I'm actually going to pivot the purpose of this video because it was originally going to be when you import a super complex mesh like this, you get this warning message, which is this mesh has more than 10,000 triangles. Calculation will take a considerable amount of time. And then you're presented with an error. But if you hit enter and then you wait a really long time, sometimes you're lucky and Fusion will actually converge it. So in this example, uh, Fusion actually converged it and this is now a solid body. And it excuse this really rugged bad 3d scan for whoever did this online um, but <laughs> for the purpose of this example it definitely works um, I even went as far as trying to do it again and it still converged so I did get the error one time though um, earlier on and it was uh, it, it was convert mesh one and then it says compute failed. The operation failed, try adjusting the values or changing the input geometry. And it says cannot convert mesh body to solid or surface body, use generate face groups or direct edit to align face groups to geometric features on the mesh body. So it's kind of a vague, confusing statement that you get presented as that error. I couldn't get it to populate. And I even went as far as downloading this even more complex model. It's this Predator model from Teresmo on Thingiverse. It's super complex. And I even waited 24 minutes to, for this thing to see if we could populate that error. And I still couldn't get it. So unfortunately, we're just going to have to assume that my viewers and I get this error on occasion and we're going to work from there to understand how we can resolve it. But look at, I mean, on the flip side, look at how well Fusion actually computed this from an STL mesh to a solid body. And I can prove that it's solid because if we turn on this analysis that I did earlier, I mean, look at that. We have a cross section right there through the middle and I can go back to... Uh, the other Mr. Beast, Beast uh, meshes as well and turn on the analysis if you want to see uh, him cut in half uh, and then I think I have one down from the waist as well so um, pretty interesting there and honestly very surprising at how advanced and complex Fusion has gotten over the years I remember when I tried to like mesh a simple I think it was like a toothbrush model early on when I was learning Fusion and I found an STL model on Thingiverse and I wanted to convert it to a solid body to kind of modify it and, and whatnot. And I couldn't even do that. And now we've got these super complex meshes that, you know, given if, if you've got some patience, you can actually get them to converge to a solid body and, and then modify them. Super cool. But let's assume you're bringing in an STL mesh for the purpose of this example. And then you do get presented with that. What's the workaround? What would I do to resolve that error? So I think that's where we're, we're going to go um, from, from this point forward in this video. So we have your STL mesh uh, inserted into our workspace. If you haven't already, check out my other uh, STL um, mesh to solid body video that I uploaded a few months back uh, for reference. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to go up here to the mesh workspace and we're going to go to modify and then we're going to select convert mesh and then you select uh, your body and make sure this is faceted and then click OK. And what you see down here is it says uh, this mesh has more than 10,000 triangles. Calculation will take a considerable amount of time. And then what we're going to assume happens is even when you press OK. now. I was actually able to get this to converge. You just have to wait a little bit. 
but we're going to assume that what you're getting presented with with a complex mesh is convert mesh compute failed the operation failed try adjusting the values or changing the input geometry cannot convert mesh etc etc so how do we resolve this so what i'm going to do is press cancel um and then at a high level the solution is reduce the mesh density right it's saying this is too much for, and oh my gosh, I think it actually did it anyways. So we're going to scroll back and we're just going to go back to um, it as an STL. Uh, so it, it presented that error. I didn't even press OK and it still converged it. So th it'll probably converge for you. <laughs> um, but what we're going to do is we want to reduce the mesh. So it's going to ask you for a body face or group and we're going to click on it uh, and then for the purposes of this example we're just going to keep it at proportion adaptive is fine and then this slider is basically your pr proportion so the lower you bring this down and if you click preview you actually get it's basically a resolution is what this proportion uh, number is referring to so the lower you bring this bar down at a, a with a red stripper portion, it's going to be way more coarse mesh. So let's click this preview button here. And you can already see it's super jagged, super coarse mesh. And I can even, you know, go further and bring this down even more. And you can see exactly what it's doing. Now, what this does allow you to do is it allows the Fusion 360 compute engine behind the scenes, that's my special terminology for it at least, um, to then mesh that way faster. And especially if you're getting that kind of compute fail there, it's going to resolve that uh, almost always. Um, so this is just reducing the amount of mesh elements, uh, brought it down to zero, 11. I mean, there becomes a point when you slide this down that you don't actually even know <laughs> after the fact what you're actually um, meshing anymore, right? So you need to be careful in that sense. Reducing the definition of your mesh definitely has its pros and cons, but I think just for the purpose of this example, we'll kind of keep it around maybe, well, 27 is kind of where it was. So let's do like 22 and we'll click okay. And it will basically just reduce the dense, the mesh density. So it's not as defined as that STL file. We recognize that, and then what we can do is go back to modify, uh, go to convert mesh, and then click on this, and then convert it to a solid body. Click OK, let it wait for a little bit, um, and then it should it, it'll convert it much quicker. You'll notice. So if you don't need something super super high res, it's also a good pro tip to understand that. This is a nice workaround if you don't want to wait, for example, 24 minutes uh, for your mesh to converge to a solid body. And then we can prove that this is solid body again, right? Um, you've seen me do this before uh, by going to inspect and then we go to section analysis. Uh, we can just use like this top, we can use this top plane that already exists and then you can see it. Um, allows us to kind of uh, cut this in half. And then if I want to create a sketch on that same top plane, it should allow us to sketch there. And let's just do like a circle, for example. We're not going to get too complex <laughs> into this. Just to prove that you can indeed modify uh, this, we will well, let's see, new body. Oh, I guess it's not actually going to show. We Maybe, maybe what we'll do is we'll make this a little larger. Uh, let's just kind of drag this out and then we'll cut, turn off the analysis, and then we should be able to modify this body and it should cut for us. Let's just see, there it goes. Okay. And pretty slick. So now Mr. Beast doesn't have a core. Um, interesting. <laughs> if you guys found any sort of value in this video, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.